So we're into the next section, 13.5, which is tangential and normal components of acceleration. We're going to start with what's called a local frame for a curve. And what we're going to do requires us to be in three dimensional space now. So you can get a tangent to a curve in any dimension. So you can do it in two dimensions, you can do it in three dimensions, in four dimensions, either way it's just a vector. Uh, you can describe how that vector changes in any dimension, any number of dimensions also. Uh, but what we're about to do is use cross products to create a frame. And cross product only exists in three dimensions. So this section right here is specifically three dimensional. So our curve will be R of t at, and we're going to look at t0. So you have some curve. This point right here will be r of t0. That gives you the actual x, y, z point. So this right here is t. I'm just going to write capital T. This will be t of t0, but the unit tangent at that value right there. And we also looked at n. That was another uh, part you computed on your quiz, hopefully. And that was n. So if you imagine this curve going through space, there is you know, tangent vector. Normal tells you how your tangent is going to change. So if you move a little bit further into your curve, how, what happens to your tangent? So on this, if you imagine this curve on the actual plane that you're looking at it on, this tells you your curve is going to go from sort of a flat curve to making an upwards direction. So the tangent vector in the future is going to look like that. So this is t of t0. This one up here would be t of t1 sometime in the future. And how does it change? I'm just going to line up the two tangent vectors, or unit normal, or unit tangent vectors like this. So how did they change? Basically, it gained a upwards component. So it gained some amount of, um, I didn't lay out a coordinate axis, but it goes upwards some. So that means the change in the tangent is, it's going to go up a little bit. Uh, so that's why the normal vector is going to point upwards. It tells you how the tangent vector is going to change. So you have a tangent vector is your index finger. Your normal, how the tangent changes, is your thumb. And if we cross them, we're going to get a third vector that is perpendicular to both of the original two. And so what we're going to get is what I'll my hand up higher. We'll get is a orthogonal set of three vectors. We could call it a basis, a local basis. Uh, but we're not going to use that word. We're going to call it a frame. So at any point along the curve, we're going to have what we call a local frame. So what does the vector b look like? If this curves on the board, b is going to point straight out of the board. Is that right? Right hand rule, t, n, yeah, v. So your thumb will point right out of the board if you go t is first finger, n is second finger. The normal vector is going to come out of the board. Oh, normal vector, geez. What do we call this? They use the letter B, which in my notes, I don't have what B stands for. Anybody know why they use B? Binormal. binormal. So binormal. So now how do we draw a vector coming out of the board? You don't, because the board's two dimensional. So we're just going to draw one at a weird angle. And then do your best to write down that it is perpendicular to the other two vectors that are already there. 
So it's going to look something like that. So it's supposed to come out of the board and be perpendicular to the other two. Beads by normal. So maybe that means normal to both the other two vectors. And B is T cross N. Of course, if you change the order around and cross T, you'll get it going the opposite direction. And this is called the TNB frame or the Frenet frame. I'm not good at French at all, but I know most T's at the end of words in French are silent. So it's basically pronounced like that. You don't say frenet. Unless you're drinking champagne. So our vector V, of course, D is a derivative of R, dr, d, t. And we can write it as do an in between dr ds times ds dt. So we know the vector v, the tangent vector, is related to the unit tangent. It's just multiplied by some scalar number. And one way to write that scalar number is ds dt. So if the speed is really big, uh, you need to take your velocity vector uh, to get it times a unit tangent. SDT. Ah, so the speed is changing. That'll be the scalar number we multiply by our unit tangent vector to relate it back to v. Yeah, so if your velocity is really big, this number right here is going to be large. And uh, so your unit tangent vector times a large number gives you your regular vector. And if you're moving like a tortoise and your speed is very small, that number underlines really tiny. So you multiply the unit vector by a small number, you get your small uh, velocity vector. So it's a way to think of how to scale them. All right, acceleration. So how do we get acceleration? We've done this before. So answer to most questions are derivative. So derivative of your velocity is your acceleration. How does your velocity change? We call that acceleration. So we'll write little a for acceleration, dv over dt. So you can write it as a derivative operator on v. And this is, I'm using the v from above. t times ds dt. And this is a scalar product right here. So we can use the product rule. So I'm going to take a t derivative of this vector. The, on the left is a vector. The t is a vector. ds dt is a number. So I'm using the product rule right here. So I could write this as so I'll do the product over here. dt d little t times ds dt plus d, let me write the t first, plus t times d dt of ds dt. That's a little bit cramped. So 
So you want to be careful with notation right here as things get a little more confusing. DDT is a derivative operator. So it's going to operate on whatever is just to the right of it. So whatever is hanging out just next to it, it's going to take the t derivative of that thing. Now it's important on the right, not on the left. So this DDT operator here operates that direction, doesn't operate back to the capital T. So the order is super important. These are not community. You can't just switch the order. That would change everything. So it operates to the right, whereas ds dt is really ddt operating on the s function or the speed function. So ds dt is a derivative that's already been taken. So it's ds dt is not an operator. It means that you already took the derivative. So this means the operation has happened. So we're going to rewrite this a little bit. Now looking on the so left side we're going to leave alone. Wait, are we? For one step, we'll leave it alone. And I'm just going to rewrite ds dt is the t <coughs> derivative of s. So we're applying actually a second derivative right here. So we could write it as. For some reason, the book flips them around. This is where I start to uh, have to read. Exact. I can follow each single step, but how to go from the beginning to the end, the steps get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to write the, uh, the second part first here. And we're going to write it as d squared dt squared of s. So that means apply the derivative twice. And it's a little bit strange. You don't need the extra parentheses that you think you might, because dt is really one whole piece. It's not a d and a t separately. So we don't need to parenthesize like that in this uh, notation here. So that's the second derivative. That's the second part. Plus, ds dt first, and then dt dt. This is regular multiplication, so it's commutative. So I can switch the order here, because these derivatives have already been applied in this notation. This is just regular multiplication on the first term, so I'm going to change the order around. Plus, now we're going to slip in a ds. So where it is dt dt, we're going to change that to dt ds ds little t. So a part I underlined three times turns into that right there. Uh, we just quick question. Yeah. Should it be d squared over dt squared? Uh, yes, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, all of our well, almost all of our derivatives are ddt, other than the dds that we just threw in. So the how do we do that? Because dds cancels like that. Uh, 
Okay, from here, there should be, yes. So why do we do this if you see there's a DSDT, DSDT? So we can just take that derivative and square it. I don't expect you to, I don't have all these memorized in the right order to put them in. So I understand going from one step to the next step, but as to why, that's a different story. So I can show you how to cross the equal sign, but why are we cro why is the chicken crossing the road? I don't know. Uh, but we will. That's not a joke. That's why nobody laughed. Chickens cross the road all the time. Yeah, I hope mine aren't crossing the road. They'll get hit, and that means less eggs. Plus, all right. So we're going to combine the DSD. I'm commenting on the notation because operation is very different than multiplication. You can't just change the order around in general. So multiplication, you're allowed to collect terms and all that good stuff. All right, we are almost done. Somewhere, dt over ds is supposed to be kn. So somewhere, if we flip around to the notes, T plus ds dt squared kn. So we'll flip back somewhere and make sure that that's right. So we. That's the curvature. Yeah, so dt ds is supposed to be k kappa n. All right, so this is a good place to stop.